sisters and brothers, why are we here tonight? To tell what Jesus did in the midst of our brothers. Sisters and brothers, why are we here tonight? To give our praise in the midst of our pain. Sisters and brothers, why are we here tonight? Sisters and brothers, why are we here tonight? To join the families of the earth as we worship the Holy One. Let us pray. O oh God of infinite love and power, we gather together on this Good Friday to reflect on the passion of Jesus Christ. We are utterly humbled in the presence of such love and mercy. Lord, we pray you open our hearts this day to the goodness of Good Friday, and fill us with your love and powerful spirit of holiness. Remove from us all sin. Offer us anew this life in Christ, Christ who makes all things new. Amen. I invite you to remain seated for our opening hymn, Were You There? Number 288. Oh. 
Tonight's Old Testament reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 52, verses 13 through chapter 53, verse 12. The Suffering Servant Psalm. Isaiah wrote, saying, See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see. And that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant. And like a root out of dry ground, he had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should despise, desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one whom others hide their faces, he was despised and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a lamb that is before its shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence. And there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was all... It was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering of sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous, the righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot, allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. And he bore the sin of many and made the intercession for the transgressors. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. <clears throat> As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry Jesus' cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read this, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. 
Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, also along with the scribes, And the elders were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. Even the bandits who were crucified with him taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard this, They said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let us see if Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and breathed his last. And at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs were also opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place. They were terrified and said, truly this was God's son. Many women were also there looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. And when it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And then Pilate ordered it be given to him. So, G- so Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. And then he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite of the tomb. And the next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that the imposter said while he was still alive, after three days I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard of soldiers. Go make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tour secure by sealing the stone. This is the word of God, for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
world we live in has decided that the norm, the average person, should feel happy. That that is how you should feel every day. You should feel happy. You should feel content. That if you're sad or grieving, then something must be wrong. Something's broken. I found this out a lot in my ministry. Every funeral, there's one person who will tell me, I'm sad, but I'm trying to get over it. As if sadness is a deviation from the norm, thus you should avoid it at all costs and move on from it. We see this in our television shows, in our movies. Watch any movie or show that's based off a book, and the number one change will probably be they give the book a happy ending in the movie. The love interests get together while in the book they stay apart. There's a happily ever after where before there was just tears. We even have phrases like turn that frown upside down. We don't like sadness. We don't like grief. That's probably why you'll never hear anyone say happy Good Friday. If you go to Hallmark store, you're not going to find a chipper Good Friday card to send your loved ones. No, we don't really like talking about Good Friday. It's a sad day. It's a mournful day. It's a day of grief. It's a day filled with emotions that we don't like talking about, that we like to avoid, that we like to shove aside and get back to the way we ought to feel, we decided, that we ought to feel happy and glad. But friends, today, today isn't something to shy away from. Today is something to recognize and remember. Today is a sad day. Today is a day where our Lord died. He gave up his spirit. We don't couch it in terms of he went to sleep or he passed on. No, Jesus died on the cross after hours of brutal torment. Sunday, we can smile. Sunday, we can laugh and sing. But today, friends... Today is a day of darkness. Today is a day of grief. For our Lord is on his way to his tomb. His death is at hand. Today is a bleak day. And at Christ's lowest moment on the cross, he doesn't yell out triumphantly. He doesn't yell out, see, this is why I've been talking about the entire time, disciples. He doesn't just cheer on and be like, yep, it's all going according to plan. No, in his lowest moments, he shouts out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And all of the gospels recordings of Jesus' death. It's this line that always catches me, that makes me stop and reflect and sometimes even cry. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because I don't know about you, I have felt that way at times. When Jesus shouts out, my God, my God, he is reflecting the anguish that so many of us have felt. Whether It's, you received a diagnosis you weren't ready for. You thought you were just going in for normal, physical, and then you get something you weren't prepared for. You shout, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Or you lost your job because the company decided they're going in a new direction. And sure, you worked there for 30 years, but... They'll just let you go. Maybe you don't know how you'll put the food on the table or pay the next bill. Maybe you're just having a bad day. Maybe you watch someone you love pass away, waste away before your eyes. And you shot out in your heart and your mind, 
with your words. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And it's not just a question. It's an accusation. You can read it with a bone-deep weariness, a soul-crushing sadness, or a boiling rage. Where is God here? Isn't God supposed to be on our side? We have that promise, right, that God will be with us. Where is God right now? How can a loving God let this happen? And with this utterance from Christ on the cross, Christ reflects our darkest moments. The moments when we doubt God and we feel abandoned. Yeah, it's a little confusing theologically. I know you'll probably be like, but Pastor Ed, what do you mean, my God, my God, how have you forsaken me? What does Jesus mean by that? Because isn't he God? He's God the Son, isn't he? Yeah. Yet here, when Christ was nailed to the cross, he felt as alone as any human being could ever feel. His friends abandoned him. One of them betrayed him and sent him to this torture. His family, well, his mom's watching all this happen. He's alone. Mocked, despised, even the men dying next to him took moments to mock him. It even felt like the Heavenly Father deserted him in the hour of his greatest need of comfort. Jesus felt completely alone up on that cross. And this sentiment... This line in the gospel, for me, brought a deeper understanding to our relationship with God. That the God we pray to in our deepest, darkest nights of our souls, when we feel alone, when we feel betrayed, forgotten, abandoned, abused, when we pray to God, God knows what we're facing. God doesn't just have sympathy for us. God has empathy for us. Our God isn't some being out there in the nebula, in the sky, who is alien and different from us as we can imagine. No, our God has walked in our shoes. Our God knows what it feels like. Our God knows our despair and our doubts. And our God understands because our God has been there. And friends, how could God condemn us for what Christ felt? So when we feel alone, when we feel lost, when we feel abandoned by God, know this, God understands you. God doesn't condemn you No, God cries with you. God walks with you, even if you don't feel God's presence. Because friends, God knows what you're going through. Because God's been through it too. That even in our darkest hour, when we shout out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why is this happening, God? Our God has not abandoned us. Our God is there. There will be times when all seems lost. I wish that wasn't true. I wish I could say to be a Christian means we live in perpetual happiness, but that's not true. You know that's not true. There will be times where we cry. There will be times of grief and sadness Just rest in the knowledge that God is with you. Not judging us for how we feel. Not judging us for our doubts. But emphasizing with us. Because the Lord is there. The Lord has been there. And friends, today,
Today is not just a day of despair and gloom. Today reminds us too that we know the truth. The day we mourn, two days we'll celebrate. For there is hope, hope of the empty tomb. The hope is why darkness may, never, may seem never ending, but soon the sun will rise. And friends, I pray you take that hope with you in your life, not just this weekend, but every day of your life. Just know, friends, Sunday will come. The darkness will break. Because Good Friday is not the end of the story. Good Friday is not the end of your story. Not by a long shot. It's just the beginning. Today is not a happy day. It's not a joyful celebration. No colorful decorations. And that's okay. Not every day needs to be a happy one. There are days where it's okay to be sad. There's days where it's even necessary to mourn. When those days are with us, we know Christ is beside us, caring for us. Until the sun shines again. Amen. I invite you to rise your able in body and spirit for our closing hymn.
friends, go from here in the name of Jesus Christ and live into the salvation made possible by the goodness of this Friday, filled with the hope of Sunday morning. Until we see each other again, God bless you all.